I've done uh, a good deal of editorial work for Docky Archive Press, who are based in Illinois, named after a, a Flann O'Brien novel, in fact. I co-edited it the review of contemporary fiction in 2011 to mark the centenary of Flann O'Brien's um, birth. Uh, and more recently, last year in August, we released, my co-editor and I, Neil Murphy, The Short Fiction of Flann O'Brien, which is an anthology of his short stories and some work that was translated from the Irish or previously undiscovered. So that's made, I think, quite an impact. It's been very well reviewed in the New Yorker and the New York Times. So we're very happy with that. Yeah. Arising largely from review work, I think I've done a certain amount of consultancy work lately. I suppose reviewing does give you a higher public profile. Uh, I'm on the advisory board for Irish Writers Week in London, which is based in the Irish Cultural Centre at Hammersmith. Uh, and as a result of the most recent festival, I gave a talk at the House of Commons in Westminster um, on Flann O'Brien. Um, it was a big honour and a privilege, but also responsibility. You're speaking on Irish matters to a wider English audience. Uh, but it was, very, um, it was very much of a privilege because that's part of my job, I think, here as a research fellow at St. Mary's, to actually do that kind of uh, public impact uh, work. Now, I was asked to become a trustee of the London Irish Centre. I've been a member of the uh, London Mayor's St. Patrick's Day Advisory Forum to advise him on the festival each year uh, since it began in 2002. And uh, academically, or perhaps still staying with voluntary, the Joseph Rowntree Foundation I've been an advisor on projects on ethnicity in Northern Ireland for them, as well as undertaking research for them. Um, academically, it, it's been various, because in some t times it's been quite hard to ra rise th raise the profile of the Irish in Britain. But for example, the Runnymede Trust has an ex uh, academic consultative forum, which I've been in for a number of years. And that specializes in looking at issues of ethnicity and racism in Britain. I was a consultant in Australia, actually, for a year in 2002, uh, partly to uh, raise their profile in Irish studies. This was at Victoria University in Melbourne, but also they wanted me to advise them on how um, uh, they could not so much promote, but in many ways improve the circumstances for um, women in the university becoming um, better placed and to perhaps look at their criteria for promotion and that sort of thing. So that was a very interesting thing to do combined with Irish studies. Um, and in addition to that, I've advised in various capacities in Ireland, both for organisations like the Immigrant Council of Ireland and for um, government-funded enterprises like the Irish Social Science Platform, which was designed to really raise the profile in social science research in Ireland where it's dominated by um, history and literature, in fact. Yes, recently I've given um, le uh, a number of public lectures. They tend to either be straight on the Irish in Britain or Irish diaspora or wider on um, more multicultural Britain. And on straight on the Irish in Britain, I gave one at the House of Commons for St Mary's, actually, last um, May, which was about trying to um, conceptualise where will the Irish in Britain be in the next um, 10, 20 years. It was called the future state of the Irish in Britain. So as Britain's immigration profile is changing, as its demographic profile is changing, but at the same time, there is yet again, I think it's the sixth phase of Irish immigration since 1940, is accelerating at the moment. It was trying to place that renewed immigration from Ireland in context historically, but also see what's the likely future. And, we, and really predicting it wouldn't be quite the same as um, has the past has been. And then on multicultural Britain, for example, I'm giving a, a public lecture at a conference in Madrid in um, the end of August 2014, which is um, a large European-wide immigration organisation, and they've asked me to come and speak, mostly about social cohesion and all that material about what makes communities cohesive. 
My consultancy work uh, so far has involved um, two projects. Um, one is with the, was with the, the BBC and the uh, British University's Film and Video Council, which um, looked at uh, the film material from BBC Belfast uh, in the 1960s and 1970s. And uh, I was part of, a, of a, an academic advisory group uh, which operated between uh, 2010 and 2012. And uh, the series was launched, so it was a web-based resource called Chronicle, um, which was launched and makes available um, film archive footage for students and researchers to do work. Um, the second uh, recent project, um, which has involved a kind of advisory capacity, uh, is working in conjunction with the Irish Film Institute in Dublin as part of their film archive DVD series. And I've been curating uh, a DVD called uh, Thaddeus O'Sullivan, uh, The Early Years, uh, 1974 to 1985. And that will be released uh, later on this year in May. I'm still a member of the Irish Research Council that looks at, evaluates postgraduate, uh, postgraduate grants. I look after the scholarship allocations for the ISL, which is the International Association for the Study of Irish Literatures. Those are my two current areas where I engage directly with um, consultancy and postgraduate research. But I'm also the academic advisor to a Brazilian theatre company, Sia Ludens, which is based in Sao Paulo. And interestingly, they specialize in the translation and then production of Irish plays. And I've worked with them and done program notes for them and are looking to develop that with a, a new project that we're developing with regard to Roger Casement. Can you say a bit 